Once again, we're living through yet another period of waiting for government permits for another Starship orbital attempt from Starbase. A delay is entirely possible, leading to the potential redirection of current attention from Starbase to the Starship Florida launch pad. So for today's episode, we're going to give you the latest update of SpaceX's Starship Florida launch pad progress. During Starship's first orbital test flight in April, we saw the damage to the surrounding infrastructure, primarily the pad and concrete below, which were destroyed. And while SpaceX can get away with an explosive test like this in Boca Chica, similar results at the Florida site would be significantly worse, as surrounding sites could end up being damaged. But of course, SpaceX knows this and has likely decided that before they continue to work at the future Florida site, they need to figure out a way to consistently withstand the force of 33 Raptor engines firing at liftoff. As a result, in recent months, progress has slowed significantly in Florida as new developments are made. Regardless, thanks to Greg Scott's flights last weekend, we can see that Space Launch Complex 40, or SLC-40, has seen some changes, with the LR-11350 being Dismantled, dismantled, and parts of the LC-39A Starship launch tower being relocated and reassembled into a different configuration. The Slick 40 Dragon Access Tower is being constructed. Oh, I see what they did there. Slick 40, huh, that's, that's pretty clever. And SpaceX plans to use this pad for cargo resupply missions and eventually as a second crew launch site. Southwest of Slick 40 is SpaceX's Roberts Road facility, housing the Falcon 9 refurbishment Hangar X and the Cape Canaveral Star Factory. Progress on the third Starship launch tower remains stagnant, while work on the prefabricated sections of the Slick 40 crew access tower is ongoing. Focusing on the overall project, since then, progress has somewhat come to a halt and for a few different reasons. SpaceX mainly wants to perfect its launch system before building it at Starbase. Anyways, Florida is definitely still the future of Starship. As SpaceX sets its sights on expanding its operations at the Kennedy Space Center, NASA is inviting public feedback. According to the Supplemental Environmental Assessment, or the SEA, recently released, the aerospace company plans to release an additional 100 acres for its Roberts Road operations area at the KSC. Currently, SpaceX leases 67 acres at the KSC for rocket processing and refurbishment. The new proposal aims to consolidate SpaceX's operations in Brevard County and construct additional infrastructure. The expansion requires the execution of a real property agreement between NASA and SpaceX, subject to environmental review under the National Environmental Policy Act. Both NASA and SpaceX stand to benefit strategically from the expansion. SpaceX's operations in Brevard County have seen an uptick in activity, with nearly two launches per week and over 100 missions planned for 2023. The proposed expansion would enhance the company's efficiency, aligning with NASA's objectives and potentially boosting the local economy. If approved, SpaceX would develop additional office spaces, industrial facilities, and utility upgrades. Construction is estimated to take between two to three years, with the site being occupied for the foreseeable future upon completion. SpaceX also proposes, proposes to widen Saturn Causeway from the Vehicle Assembly Building to Phillips Parkway, approximately 3.9 miles, to support launch vehicle transport. Saturn Causeway would be widened approximately 8 feet from approximately 26 feet to approximately 34 feet and drainage swales would be improved. Construction would occur within the maintained area along the southern side of the road. The SEA also outlines alternative expansion options and environmental considerations. One such alternative involves expanding to the south of Roberts Road, requiring approximately 115 acres due to the proximity of existing features like an FPL solar farm. For those interested in sharing their views, you can submit comments comments via the email we placed in the description. And if it's not there, let us know in the comments down below. Meanwhile, in a September 18th interview, Kelvin Coleman, FAA Associate Administrator for Commercial Space Transportation, said his office was working well with SpaceX to confirm that the company had implemented the corrective actions from a mishap investigation that the FAA formally closed on September 8th related to public safety. Coleman said that of the 63 corrective actions listed in the mishap report, 
more, 27 are linked to public safety. So one thing that we'll need to see before the next operation is evidence that shows that the company has closed out the corrective actions that are specifically tied to public safety, he said. We're on a pretty good schedule, he said, affirming comments made by the FAA's acting administrator, Polly Trottenberg, at a conference on September 13th, where she projected that a modified license could be ready in October. It'll probably set us somewhere in mid to late October for the conclusion of the safety review. However, he added that completing the safety review alone will not be sufficient for the license modification. A separate environmental review is needed to examine changes to launch site infrastructure, including the water deluge system intended to minimize pad damage suffered in the April launch. That review is being carried out in conjunction with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to comply with the Endangered Species Act. A spokesperson for that agency said on September 19th that the Fish and Wildlife Service is discussing the project details with FAA staff to understand the extent of new effects of the water deluge system. That piece is a little bit of a wild card, Coleman said, of that environmental review. We're hoping that piece will wrap up somewhere in proximity to the safety review. Finally, Coleman declared his office has a good working relationship with the company, talking regularly with SpaceX executives. I think we're all striving to solve immediate challenges that are in front of us but also think more strategically down the line in terms of how we can better our relationship and how can we better engage as different applications come our way in the future. Those discussions included a visit last week by Elon Musk, SpaceX founder and chief executive, who met with Trottenberg, Deputy Administrator Katie Thompson, and Coleman about the licensing process. We had a good conversation with him, he said. I think the relationship is working pretty well, he concluded, while noting that SpaceX is pushing hard to fly again as soon as possible so it can make progress on missions that will use Starship, like the Artemis Lunar Lander variant. There are some challenges we have to work through from time to time. The space industry consistently exhibits its inherent dangers and unpredictability. However, yesterday, a Rocket Lab Electron rocket carrying a radar imaging satellite for Capella Space failed after a problem occurred two and a half minutes into the flight. It was the fourth failure in 41 flights for the small satellite launcher. The 18-meter rocket lifted off from Pad B at Rocket Lab's privately operated spaceport on the North Island of New Zealand at 2.55 a.m. EDT, a little later than planned due to high levels of solar activity. Launch controllers reported all was going well as nine Rutherford engines burning kerosene and liquid oxygen propellants propelled the vehicle to an altitude of 70 kilometers before burning out two and a half minutes after liftoff. The first and second stages separated with the aid of pneumatic pushers, but as the single Rutherford vacuum engine of the second stage was supposed to ignite, a brief glow was seen followed by a spray of orange sparks, and then video from cameras aboard the rocket froze. An on-screen gauge showed the vehicle was losing velocity. The launch director announced about 30 seconds later. And all stations, I just uh, we have experienced an anomaly. Um, please remain on station and we will investigate and action the anomaly plan. In a post to the social media site X, formerly known as Twitter, Rocket Lab founder and chief executive Peter Beck said, Tough day. My deepest apologies to our mission partners, Capella Space. Team is already working on the root cause. We will find it, fix it, and be back on the pad quickly. In a statement, Rocket Lab said its next launch, which was to occur later this month, would be postponed to allow any corrective actions that might be needed. The investigations will be conducted in conjunction with the FAA, which licenses Rocket Lab's commercial launch operations. This this is the fourth failure for the Electron rocket in 41 flights. All four failures have occurred after the first stage separation during the flight of the second stage. Electron's first flight in May of 2017 did not make it to orbit, but that was later determined to be a ground software problem, and the rocket itself had been performing normally before a range safety destruct command was sent. The most recent failure prior to Tuesday's mishap was back in May of 2021. And that's about it, folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. And as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.